Okay, this is section four of the New York Commercial Driver License. Uh, the transporting passengers safely section. So section four, this section covers when the passenger endorsement is required, vehicle inspection, loading and trip start, on the road, after trip vehicle inspection, prohibited practices, and use of brake door interlocks. 4.1, when the passenger endorsement is required. You must have a commercial driver license, CDL, with the passenger P endorsement if you plan to drive a vehicle designated to transport 15 or more adult passengers, excluding the driver, or defined as a bus under Article 19A, Section 509A of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, VTL, or with a gross vehicle weight or gross vehicle weight rating of more than 26,000 pounds, which is designed to transport passengers in commerce that has been altered, commonly referred to as a stretch limousine that has been modified to carry nine or more passengers, including the driver. If you plan to transport students between their home bus stop and school in a school bus that has a gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, of 26,001 pounds or more, or is designed to transport 15 or more adult passengers, excluding the driver, you must also have a school bus S endorsement. See section 10, school bus. You do not need a CDL or passenger endorsement if you plan to transport only members of your family, only for non-commercial purposes. To get the passenger endorsement, you must pass a knowledge test on sections two and four of this manual. If your bus has air brakes, you must also pass a knowledge test on section five. You must also pass the skills test required for the class of vehicle you drive. Okay, so there's a knowledge test on to the passenger endorsement for sections two and four. And if you're, the bus has air brakes, you have to pass the knowledge test on section five. You must also pass the skills test required for the class of vehicle you drive. All right, 4.2 vehicle inspection. Before driving your bus, you must be sure it is safe you must review the inspection report made by the previous driver. Only if defects reported earlier have been certified as repaired or not needed to be repaired. Should you sign the previous driver's report? This is your certification that the defects reported earlier have been fixed. 4.2.1 Vehicle systems. Make sure these things are in good working order before driving. Service brakes, including air hose couplings, if your bus has a trailer or semi-trailer. Parking brake, steering mechanism, lights and reflectors, tires. Front wheels must not have recapped or regrooved tires. Horn, windshield wiper or wipers, rear vision mirror or mirrors, coupling devices if present, wheels and rims, emergency equipment required by law, fire extinguisher, emergency reflectors, spare electrical fuses unless equipped with circuit breakers. 
Access doors and panels. As you check the outside of the bus, close any open emergency exits. Also, close any open access panels for baggage, restroom service, engine, etc. before driving. 4.2.3 Bus Interior People sometimes damage unattended buses. Always check the interior of the bus before driving to ensure rider's safety. Aisles and stairwells should always be clear. The following parts of your bus must be in safe working condition. Each handhold and railing, floor covering, signaling devices, including the restroom emergency buzzer. If the bus has a restroom, emergency exit handles. The seats must be safe for riders. All seats must be securely fastened to the bus. Never drive with an open emergency exit door or window. The emergency exit sign on an emergency door must be clearly visible. If there is a red emergency door light, it must work. Turn it on at night or any other time you use your outside lights. 4.2.4 Roof Hatches you may lock some emergency roof hatches in a partly open position for fresh air. Do not leave them open as a regular practice. Keep in mind the bus's higher clearance while driving with them open. 4.2.5 Use your seatbelt. The driver's seat should have a seatbelt. Always use it for safety. 4.3 Loading and Trip Start Do not allow riders to leave carry-on baggage in a doorway or aisle. There should be nothing in the aisle that might trip other riders. Secure baggage and freight in ways that avoid damage and allow the driver to move freely and easily. Allow riders to exit by any window or door in an emergency. Protect riders from injury if carry-ons fall or shift. By the way, this is uh, CDL 10, 5 slash 22, New York State Commercial Driver's Manual. 4.3.1, transporting passengers safely. Um, so 4.3.1 is hazardous materials. Watch for cargo or baggage containing hazardous materials. Most hazardous materials cannot be carried on a bus. The Federal Hazardous Materials Table shows which materials are hazardous. See Figure 4.1. They pose a risk to health, safety, and property during transportation. The rules require shippers to mark containers of hazardous material with the material's name, identification number, and hazard label. There are nine different four-inch diamond-shaped hazard labels. See examples in Figure 4.2. Watch for the diamond-shaped labels Do not transport any hazardous materials unless you are sure the rules allow it. So the hazard class definitions, class one is explosives like ammunition, dynamite, and fireworks. Class two are gases like propane, oxygen, and helium. Class three are flammable and combustible liquid like gasoline fuel, acetone, fuel oils, and lighter fluid. Class four are flammable solids, like matches and fuses. Class five is oxidizers, 
and ammonium uh, examples are ammonium nitrate and hydrogen peroxide. Class six is poisons like pesticides and arsenic. Class seven is radioactive like uranium and plutonium. Class eight are corrosives like hydrochloric acid and battery acid. Class nine are miscellaneous hazardous uh, materials like formaldehyde and asbestos. And if there's none, that might, uh, class none, that might be ORM-D. That's other regulated material, domestic. Some examples are hairspray or charcoal. Now, 4.3.2 covers forbidden hazardous materials. Buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORMD. That's other regulated material domestic. All right, buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORMD, emergency hospital supplies, and drugs. You can carry small amounts of some other hazardous materials if the shipper cannot send them any other way. Buses may never carry Division 2.3 poison gas, liquid class 6 poison, tear gas, irritating material. More than, uh, you may, buses may never carry more than 100 pounds of solid class six poisons. They may never carry explosives in the space occupied by people, except small arms ammunition. They may never carry labeled radioactive materials in the space occupied by people. They may never carry more than 500 pounds total of allowed hazardous materials and no more than 100 pounds of any one class. Riders sometimes board a bus with an unlabeled hazardous material. Do not allow riders to carry on common hazards such as car batteries or gasoline. All right, section 4.3.3, Stand D line. No rider may stand forward of the rear of the driver's seat. Buses designed to allow standing must have a two-inch line on the floor or some other means of showing riders where they cannot stand. This is called the standee line. All standing riders must stay behind it. 4.3.4, at your destination. When arriving at the destination or intermediate stops, announce the location, reason for stopping, next departure time, and the bus number. All right, this is at your destination. Remind riders to take carry-ons with them if they get off the bus. If the aisle is on a lower level than the seats, remind riders of the step down. It is best to tell them before coming to a complete stop. Charter bus drivers should not allow riders on the bus until departure time. This will help prevent theft or vandalism of the bus. 4.4 4. On the Road 4.4.1 4. Passenger Supervision Many charter and inner city carriers have passenger comfort and safety rules. Mention rules about smoking, drinking, or use of radio and tape players at the start of the trip. Explaining the rules at the start will help to avoid trouble later on. While driving, scan the interior of your bus as well as the road ahead, to the sides, and to the rear. You may have to remind riders about rules or to keep arms and heads inside the bus. 4.4.2 at stops. Riders can stumble when getting on or off and when the bus starts or stops. Caution riders to watch their steps 
their step when leaving the bus. Wait for them to sit down or brace themselves before starting. Starting and stopping should be as smooth as possible to avoid rider injury. Occasionally, you may have a drunk or disruptive rider. You must ensure this rider's safety as well as that of others. Don't discharge such riders where it would be unsafe for them. It may be safer at the next scheduled stop or a well-lighted area where there are other people. Many carriers have guidelines for handling disruptive riders. 4.4.3 Common Accidents The Most Common Bus Accidents Bus accidents often happen at intersections. Use caution, even if a signal or stop sign controls other traffic. School and mass transit buses sometimes scrape off mirrors or hit passing vehicles when pulling out from a bus stop. Remember the clearance your bus needs and watch for poles and tree limbs at stops. Know the size of the gap your bus needs to accelerate and merge with traffic. Wait for the gap to open before leaving the stop. Never assume other drivers will brake to give you room when you signal or start to pull out. 4.4.4 Speed on Curves Crashes on curves that kill people and destroy buses result from excessive speed, often when rain or snow has made the road slippery. Every bank curve has a safe design speed. In good weather, the posted speed is safe for cars, but it may be too high for many buses. With good traction, the bus may roll over. With poor traction, it might slide off the curve. Reduce speed for curves. Reduce speed for curves. If your bus leans toward the outside on a bank curve, you are driving too fast. 4.4.5 Railroad Highway Crossing Stops Stop at Railroad Crossings, RR. Stop your bus between 15 and 50 feet before railroad crossings. Listen and look in both directions for trains. You should open your forward door if it improves your ability to see or hear an approaching train. Before crossing after a train is passed, make sure there isn't another train coming in the other direction on the tracks. If your bus has a manual transmission, never change gears while crossing the tracks. You do not have to stop, but must slow down and carefully check for other vehicles. At streetcar crossings, where a policeman or flagman is directing traffic. If a traffic signal is green, at crossings marked as exempt or abandoned. Those are ones you do not have to stop, but must slow down and carefully check for other vehicles. That's streetcar crossings, policemen or flagmen directing traffic, traffic signal is green, and crossings marked as exempt or abandoned. 4.4.6, drawbridges. Stop at drawbridges. Stop at drawbridges that do not have a signal light or traffic control attendant. Stop at least 50 feet before the draw of the bridge. Look to make sure the draw is completely closed before crossing. You do not need to stop, but must slow down and make sure it's safe when there is a traffic light showing green. The bridge has an attendant or traffic officer who controls traffic whenever the bridge opens. 4.5 After Trip Vehicle Inspection 
inspect your bus at the end of each shift. If you work for an interstate carrier, you must complete a written inspection report for each bus driven. The report must specify each bus and list any defect that would affect safety or result in a breakdown. If there are no defects, the report should say so. Riders sometimes damage safety-related parts, such as handholds, seats, emergency exits, and windows. If you report this damage at the end of a shift, mechanics can make repairs before the bus goes out again. Mass transit drivers should also make sure passenger signaling devices and brake door interlocks work properly. 4.6 Prohibited Practices Avoid fueling your bus with riders on board unless absolutely necessary. Never refuel in a closed building with riders on board. Don't talk with riders or engage in any other distracting activity while driving. Do not tow or push a disabled bus with riders aboard the vehicle, unless getting off would be unsafe. Only tow or push the bus to the nearest safe spot to discharge passengers. Follow your employer's guidelines on towing or pushing disabled buses. 4.7 Use of Brake Door Interlocks Urban mass transit coaches may have a brake and accelerator interlock system. The interlock applies the service brakes and holds the throttle in idle position when the rear door is open. The interlock releases when you close the rear door. Do not use this safety feature in place of the parking brake. Okay, some questions from section four to test your knowledge. One, name some things to check in the interior of a bus during a pre-trip inspection. Two, what are some hazardous materials you can transport by bus. Three, what are some hazardous materials you can't transport by bus? Four, what is a standee line? Five, does it matter where you make a disruptive passenger get off the bus? Six, how far from a railroad crossing should you stop? Seven, when, when must you stop before crossing a drawbridge? Eight, describe from memory the prohibited practices listed in the manual. Nine, the rear door of a transit bus has to be open to put on the parking brake. True or false? These questions may be on your test. If you can't answer them all, reread section four.